a question that comes up quite often on my indoor cycling live streams is, so how do I insert my iPhone screen here in real time? So having the mobile phone screen shown there during my live streams in real time is very handy. If I'm running Zwift, I can show the companion app, which gives a more full experience of what Zwift is all about and what I'm doing on the platform. I can also load in other apps such as firmware updating for trainers or spin downs, maybe even pull up Instagram, have a look at some photos, websites, anything that can be shown on a mobile phone can be done during the live stream with this configuration. Now there are many ways to skin this cat, bringing in a screen in real time, but the way I do it needs to be simple, needs to be reliable and low latency. Okay, now straight into the hardware solution that I've gone with in the Llama Lab and something that will save you a lot of money if you switch it up like I have in recent weeks. So first of all, I'm using an old iPhone 6 as the screen. From there, lightning port into the HDMI say Lightning the HDMI adapter from Apple. I go with the official Apple products, they seem to be more reliable. There's also another Lightning port in here that I can use for charging the phone whilst in use, very handy. So Lightning HDMI out, obviously into a HDMI cable. From there, goes into a HDMI to USB capture card or capture device. Now this is a Camlink by Elgato. I love Elgato stuff, I use quite a lot of their products. They do very well in the market for live streaming, but this one is a premium device, quite expensive at around $200 Australian, and is very, very much overkill for what I need to bring in just a mobile phone screen. So before making this video and pointing everyone towards a very expensive capture card, which is well overkill for what you need, I jumped on Amazon and found the cheapest HDMI to USB capture device or capture card that I could find. I ended up with this. $33 Australian, around 25 US from where I purchased it from, has been seen as low as $18. And this thing has been in use in the Llama Lab on my live streams for the last two months and has worked flawlessly. So to side by side these devices here, this one here will only do 1080 at 30 frames a second. The Elgato Camlink can do up to 4K at 30 frames or 1080 at 60. If you're doing anything in higher resolution, such as bringing in an Apple TV, a computer, a high resolution webcam, something that requires a lot of processing and a lot of quality, definitely go with a premium option. But if you're using it for something I'm doing right here today, such as bringing in an iPhone screen, this thing is more than capable at 10% of the price of the other one. It's also worth noting the lightning adapter will only output in 1082, so there's that. Okay, with the power of video editing, here we are in my live stream setup, or a replica of my live stream setup, with everything plugged in, and I'll show you how easy it is to bring this phone in in real time. So we hit plus on this, we want a video capture device. If it's not already there, you just create new, select the USB video capture device and it will show up. So Amazon HDMI capture, bang, there we are. There's the phone, easy as that. Now what we need to do here is just scope out the correct sizing. So we're pressing the Alt key, dragging things in here. Be very precise. Oh, good stuff. I've done it all sorted already. So we make that nice and small, push that over to the edge, and there we have it. And yes, it is in real time there. So we have some write ons given. We maybe even jump over to Instagram, have a scroll through what's new on Instagram. All looking good, but you can see there, it's as easy as that to bring that in once it's all configured. All right, we'll leave that back on screen. Next up, to make it look like a phone, it's a bit of a trick. We just simply add a picture of a phone and put it to the background around here. That's with a plus. We add image. I already have an image resource called iPhone 6. We load that, which is still a little too big. Resize this. Looks, oh, we'll look about right there, and then we push that to the back. We're pulling that down, and there we go. We have the phone in real time in the live stream. Scrolling up and down, nice and responsive. Jump over to Instagram, and it's all looking good. But the one thing you'll find with this HDMI capture device and the Apple Lightning adapter is it will wash out the colors a little bit so we can add some filters. So now onto the advanced side of things for that. Right click, filters on that. We can add a color correction. Uh, color correction, that's fine. We'll just make this a little bigger so we can see what's going on. That tax blue, looking a little too blue. That there has a, just a bit too much uh, 
contrast. It just doesn't look quite like the Zwift orange that we know. So we'll do a hue shift on this down to about, that's probably about perfect. So just a little bit, just to fine tune what that looks like. There we go, perfect. That looks more like the phone screen that I have right in front of me here, up on the screen there. Next up, because it is downscaling or playing with the resolutions, it does look a little blurred. There's an option for that too. We go right click, filters on that. You can add a sharpen filter. It's not gonna work wonders, but it's gonna look just a little bit better with the sharpness just turned up. You can see that happening over there. And push that out to about probably a 0.29 or thereabouts, 2.7. That looks a little better. If you go too far, it looks way too grainy. Up there it looks horrible. Just pushing that down. As I said, about a 2.9. Looks good to go. There we are. Phone in, color corrected, and working in real time. Happy, happy days. Next up is the audio. Now with the Elgato solution, obviously there's better driver support, there's better everything support for a $200 plus device. Well, that's in Aussie dollars too, remember? An expensive device. For this cheaper car that I'm using now and will continue to use because it solves the problem just fine, it uses the generic system drivers, which then splits the video and audio as two separate things. So if I jump over and try and play some music now, thank you boys. The HDMI capture isn't moving at all for sound, so I'm getting nothing out of that. Quick fix for that, if you're using Windows, this also all works on Mac too. Uh, properties of the capture device, custom audio device, and we scroll down to USB digital audio. That's what we need if you wanna bring in sound from your phone. Probably not really worth it, but again, if you wanna do something extra, there we go. And that sound bar is moving. I'm not going to play the sound. That would be a uh, violation of copyrights and things on the, especially on the Beatles. So we'll leave that alone. But that's how to bring in the sound as well. So there we are. As you can see there, that cheaper USB capture device works very, very well. The most expensive part of all of that, assuming you have a phone laying around, is the lightning to HDMI adapter from Apple. Now in wrap up, I will say if you're using your own personal mobile phone for this, do note, you will be getting calls, text, messages, anything that will show up on your phone screen whilst unlocked will show up in your live stream. Be very careful of that. Always handy to have a second phone for this task. And for convenience, in the Llama Lab, I'm using a quad lock desk holder for the phone. So the phone itself has a, I use quad locks on all my phones, so it has a quad lock on the back, phone clips in, sits on there on an angle so I can press it, easily accessible during the ride. So there we are for today, how I bring in my mobile phone in real time during my live streams. Hopefully that answers all the questions and shows people how to get set up and save some money with that cheaper capture device if this is all you need to do with it. As always, remember to hit subscribe to support this channel. It's much appreciated and we'll see you soon, maybe on a live stream.